さん、チーズ、エルダカブリッジ、EX のスポーツキャストによっこそ。このラジオで人生、テレビ、アニメ、映画、ゲーム、話して、質問を答えて、声優の早期を知って、そしてこのチャンネルをアップデートしてるよ
Like, uh, what? So if I say, sir, that means I'm 19? What the fuck does that even mean, Dante? Ah! <laughs> Think about that, guys. If you say, sir, you're probably 19. Ta-da. Yeah, I don't know either. Look, drugs are bad, man, okay? You shouldn't do them because they're bad. Okay. Anyways, let's go talk about life, 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 life. So Yazaki Chan, how was how how was what was how was your how was how was how was that 2020 like so far? Well, considering the state of the world, my personal life is you know just about as tumultuous amid all these sudden life changes amid the outbreak. Even though I said I wouldn't mention it before, there's otherwise adult stresses such as you know, working, handling work stress. I did have to move recently though, about in the, about a month ago at this point, I had to move. I'm still sort of mentally and emotionally recovering just from how strenuous that process is, but it went smoothly and I am in a home that I really do love and I very much so am excited to really turn into my own home as well and somewhere that I can be much more secure and sort of actually get to start on my life now as living smack dab in the middle of Portland. Obviously, you're going to be living paycheck to paycheck. And as fun as that was, it's not really a way to live. So now I'm really kind of setting my sights on what I actually want to do for my life going forward. Rather, at least I'm still, you know, figuring out what exactly it is that I should be doing on top. Otherwise, that's pretty much all I have on my plate is, you know, going through typical adult life changes as a little bebby 21 year old and just figuring out how to go about that because obviously I'm still getting my footing on this whole living independently sort of thing. Yep. It's all going well though, so I can only hope that it gets better from here and that I can catch myself before it gets too bad. Yeah, when you get knocked down, you'll get up again. Mm -hmm. They're never gonna keep you down. Yes, exactly. There's my song <laughs> reference and I'm not even on the ward cast. <laughs> Alec, are you proud of me? All right. That's all you wanted to talk about? Uh, I can't really think of much else that I want to talk about, at least off the top of my head. Right. I do have some of our stuff covered, so we'll get on to that. All right. Okay, so I guess we're passing the ball over here. Fantastic. Okay, so since last Spoodcast, it really kind of came by quick, because um, at the time of the last one, it was like near the end of February. So it's only been about like three uh, weeks-ish. And uh, as of right now, the recording of this Spoodcast, it is March 15th. Umi's birthday. Happy birthday, Waifu-chan. Yay! Yay. And it was the very first form of media that you and I actually bonded over thinking about it. <laughs> the Umi x Umi? No, just love life in general, you dickhead. Oh, right. <laughs> I downloaded it because of you. Right. Oops. And now she's got a full squad of fucking Nico URs on her team, and I hate it. Hey, you want to see the funny thing that my phone's just not letting me do in terms of love life? What? Get uh, past the update? Yep, get past the update, because I ain't got no goddamn space on my phone anymore. <laughs> she's free, guys. She's free. Anyways, getting back on track. So it's been really just mostly just work and school, and it's actually been pretty... Uh, my English class that I managed to get it hooked up with, I think I mentioned it last bootcast, I barely remember right now at the top of my head, but it was a late start, it started like at the end of February, whereas in like my other class started like at the end of January or whatever, and both the Asian history class that I'm taking um, was going to end around May and so was the English one. So my teacher is like, alright, get ready for lots of work, I'm like, Lots of work. What on earth could she possibly mean? Oh my god! There's a fucking shit ton of work! She's like... She's like... Giving me like this big ass page of all the shit we need to do in one week and it's... Like, when I see like too much thing on the screen, I get a little overwhelmed. Cause I, I have a very like, give it to me in bits and pieces. Or which one's more relevant for the week kind of thing. And she'll have shit that's like, alright, this one's due in April. I'm like, it's... It's March! It's the end of February! What are you doing right now? I get that she's trying to get you ready in advance, but like that 
information needs to be somewhere else because then I go to week two and I'm not going to think about week one or like, you know, I'll have to keep some of these pages open so I can be right there to see what she fucking wants from me. And it's just really overwhelming, man. This is my last semester at my community college and I feel like I'm facing the final boss in English. Because Jesus, uh, trying to juggle that in Asian history is tedious, but really all I had to do was go into class and listen to a lecture and then make sure I do whatever reading assignment, but I'm starting to find myself struggling to balance between the two. And just this last week, I, I didn't make it to any of the lecture classes because uh, I'll talk about why for the first time later. The second time was because I set my alarm way too late. I thought I set it to 11.50. I had it at 1.50. I wake up to my dog barking and I check the time to see, oh my god, it's 12 o'clock. Class ends in 30 minutes. I guess I'm not going to class again today either. It doesn't even matter because now the virus has put that class online, which is probably the only thing I'm, I like about the virus. That's I think that's pretty much it. The fact that this one class I really wish was online is online. So... Now I can just go to, to bed whenever, sort of, and do my fucking thing. Uh, meanwhile, I've been trying to just, you know, hustle at work. I had to cut down my hours because I was, I first convinced my boss to give me like, or my manager for my schedule to give me uh, four days or three days. I said four or three. She gave me all four. Originally, I had two days in the week, which was making me jack shit. And uh, then I had four. And then I now because of the virus uh i was originally going to ask her to give me three so i could work with my class but because of the virus and now there's this rule of 100 people now i have two days in the week that i'm working so i guess i can make more time for school or to do a little bit of that or darker bridger stuff because uh all that school and work was making it really hard to do darker bridger stuff i'll talk about more about the details of what i need to do in the update section but needless to say um if this spoodcast comes out later than like the week of march 15th you guys know already now why i'm having a hard time trying to like do anything because school and work and especially my English class is suffocating my fucking face. And also us being in the middle of a fucking pandemic. Yeah. And then, then also trying to still live my life and be a good friend. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's struggling. Other than that, you know, there's been some little little, little work shenanigans happening here and there. My... My former crush, who I had given up on, is now talking to me because I saw her on the way out from DVC one day. She's like, hey, you go to DVC, don't you? And she, we were talking about what we plan on doing, and she's telling me she's got some ambitions to do some accounting or whatever. I'm just like, wow. And she's taking, like, she's working two days in a week, and she's got hell more class than I could put up with. And I'm just like, I never would have known. And, oh, my God, she's talking to me. Like, all my other coworkers who knew my struggle with this girl is just like, Whoa, I can't believe it. This girl is talking to Dante. Should we stop them? Should we say something? No, let me have this because she, I'm back to normal with her after all the bullshit I went through with uh, with one guy misleading me and this other girl playing a fool, making a fool out of me. It's over. It's, and we did it. Also, the girl that made a fool out of me in front of this girl has officially been fired. Good riddance. This, this is karma for when you try to do bad things in the workplace, justice will be served. So, um, there was some little, some little of that going on. There's been some rough, rough customers here and there. There's nothing too much I can really call out of the top of my head. Um, you know, hanging out with the coworkers. You know, I've been living that, that nice server life, you know, so, and I've been really just making some good dough for the most part. My quota, which is like $100 or something like that, has usually been made. Only a few times I didn't really make it, but I don't know. I'm getting by. There's some fun stuff happening. There was actually just one yesterday that I didn't think I was going to get. There was this birthday party that came in, and it started with the lady, you know, going like, Oh my god, this, these music videos that are playing on the screen, I know this is a public place, but I cannot have this right here. If my kids are here, this is practically pornography. I need you to get your manager here to change that, please. And so, you know, we got it changed. We changed out of the music videos and uh, put something else on. And, you know, I apologize because they were my table. And, you know, they were, they were really nice after that. Like, they were just like, you know, it's fine. It's 
it's not your fault. They were like re being really understanding. I take their orders and they're like, it's a party of 18, which is really huge for me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've been trying to do that and I still get like one or two more tables I have to take care of at the same times. Uh, but, you know, I can only do so much. I'm human. So it's like some people were still waiting for their food or their drinks and then the kitchen crew messed up on this guy's um, food like he put all the top they put all the toppings the guy said he didn't want so birthday boy had to wait for that and then I had to come back like minutes later for that and then I found out two other people were missing their food and they so they called the manager over to get like some discounts or whatever and they just the, the guy birthday boy looked really sad and disappointed and I was just feeling like really bad it's like oh man and uh, we come to go settle the bill and all and I'm ready for like shitty tip and losing you know that because of the experience and uh they give me their card and they the bill was like about 160 something and they was like put 80 on the card and then the rest with cash I'm like okay there's 130 dollars here and they want me to put 80 that, that doesn't make sense so I'm like all right I'll go be back to get your change he's like I don't need it you don't need it well what do you mean we're giving that as you as your tip. I'm like, what? what, what, what but I, I don't deserve it. You guys had a bad time. I, 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 I. And they're just like, no, we know it wasn't your fault. And you did your best. And, you know, you really tried to do what you can for, you know, a table this big. And I'm like, I'm like actually legitimately getting a little emotional. Like they could actually see me crying a bit because I'm like, they're so nice. And they understand. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. For, for a little context, uh, both Dante and I work as servers in corporate uh, chains, not exactly indie joined, which maybe if you don't realize here in America or just in general, corporate restaurants tend to get really, really, really shitty entitled customers. Yeah, we got some people who go to quote unquote five star restaurants acting like a two star customer. Like, someone who rather just should be going to, like, fucking In-N-Out or Jack of the Box or some fast food place than a five-star one if they're not going to act like a five-star customer. But these guys, these guys were acting as such. And I was, I was really, like, moved and that really made me a little emotional. Also, my coworker, one of my coworkers, she kind of helped me too. Like, while I was taking one table's order, she opened up another table for me instead of taking it for herself. And... <sighs> I, 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 there's just some good people out in this world and it, and it really touches my heart because I'm used to like taking all the shit I'm, I'm used <laughs> to being like the male Joan of Arc which in case you don't know what the male Joan of Arc is that's the guy who takes the shit the downfall even if they were the best person on the planet huh? so yeah that's that's been that's been work it's been fun um, outside of work as as you may have already guessed Good old Jessica Chan came down to visit from Oregon, do a little bit of, you know, self journey and all that jazz. Before we were forced to stay inside, we did a lot of, you know, touristing around places that we are very well acquainted with and have basically regard as our regular hangout spots. It's just been so long because I had suddenly moved out of state and had been there for quite some time, so. Practically about a year ish. Over, a little over a year, actually. So. For us, or in retrospect, not too long, but for us, very long. Yes, <laughs> miss my big friend. <laughs> so uh, we'll talk about some of the stuff we did in the rep respective, you know, media talk, because that's basically what that's going to be. Mm -hmm. But in terms of non-media related stuff, we went out to uh, SF. I was about to almost said SF State. We went to go to uh, Japantown. Which was like, as I said, the common like hangout ground, but that was also like the place where, you know, our. When we had dated, that was basically where the, uh, the seed for the romance was sprouted. That was the very first place that he and I ever actually hung out one on one together and actually got to, like, instead of talk, you know, talk. <laughs> Because we originally first met at Zach's birthday. Everyone knows Zach from episode three of the Spoodcast. Mm -hmm. That is, we originally met there, but we didn't really go anywhere until... A fun fact is, is that Zach and I went to high school together. He was a senior when I was a freshman. But I was already graduated. Yeah, you were already graduated, but... Oh, yeah, Zach and I are in the same year. So, yeah, I actually met this one here. You can't see it, but I'm touching his head. I met this one here through Zach, so... We also kind of, you know, credit and thank him for the fact that Dante and I have such a strong friendship. Yep. 
So Japantown was also the place, like at the time when I went there, it was during a little Love Live gathering. So that further seeded her love for Love Live. I was uh, cosplaying as an um, a, a male Umi with like a katana. I don't think I had my wig then. I don't remember. Um, oh no, you did. Remember I was helping you uh, style it the day of? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's been that long. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I was it was Umi wearing a ton. There was like a there was like a fan art of Umi that I saw, and that's what I went with. So yeah, that was that. So we went back there to go get some good old ramen, which was what we did last year when she visited for like one week, mm-hmm. one week friends. So we got that. We had a little bit of sake, and then I got to try awayuki sake, which is sparkling sake. Which is great. I never realized how much I like sparkling sake until I had awoyuki. And that was also our first time getting to actually, well, yeah, that was our first time getting to actually legally drink together. (laughs) Ta-da. So that was all fun. We had like, we had our noodles and zoodles. Uh, It was a peaceful afternoon. And then the night came. And then the night came. <laughs> but uh, before we got to that, we, we did do a little shopping around there. And she got she got herself a little... Um, I got myself the entirety of Serial Experiments Lane on Blu-ray, which is important to me because I did not realize that every other Blu-ray of it that exists is at least $400. Oh, wow. Mine was 50 Good price. So... An actual steal. An actual steal. So then we headed back, we headed back to our local area to then go to round one where we were going to do drunk karaoke. And we did. Got really drunk. We ran into actually some of my coworkers, uh, two of them who I hang out with. I went drinking out with them the night before and then I was going to tell them about how fun, you know, whole day was when I saw them at work. But then they came in anyways and they got drunk and we all... Had a merry, merry time. It was a lot of fun. Um, and then we, we, we sang stuff like Bring Me to Life. And Judas by Lady Gaga. Diz, be proud of me. We sang Judas, and it's all your damn fault. Well, it's my damn fault for making <laughs> you think about the song, but then you got it in my head. So, fuck. Uh, what else did we sing? A lot of Linkin Park. Did we actually get to Lincoln Park? We did. Oh, we did sing in the end. We did. No wonder I didn't. I, why didn't I record that? I was like, did we sing it? Oh, Just I did. You in the moment, man. Yes, that was pretty much it. Um, there were some other songs too. Oh, we sang Barbie Girl. How did I not remember that? <laughs> Maybe you were that drunk I at that point. I probably was. So, uh, I mean, there, it was my other coworker singing with her because my vocals were literally dying after a while. But I was like, I'm done singing. But I kept singing because clearly I wasn't done singing. <laughs> so, fuck. Your body was done, but your heart wasn't. <laughs> my heart will never go on. Oh god, I'm kind of glad we didn't end up singing that because that would have been a dumpster fire. <laughs> Yeah, no, I wouldn't, I would not. It would just be funny to see what would happen. Not even us necessarily being depressed, just us trying to hit, hit those notes and hold our breath for that long was drunk. I mean, I already did hit my edgy song by singing Edema, which uh, was one of my favorite bands for those of you who ever played Mortal Kombat Daily Alliance and saw that music video. That was Edema, and uh, I love that band. They're one of my classic favorites. I did sing that, so that was the most edge I got out. Besides, like, our meme edge of Bring Me to Life and all that shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's pretty much it, because, you know, there's still a lot more things to go along down the line with life. School, struggling with it. Taking, seeing my best friend while she's still in town and making the most out of the year she kind of vanished off the map. I needed it. I'll, I'm going to just say that I kind of needed it. And I am much better for it, despite everything. That kind of led up to why I moved, which is data expunged. (laughs) So now that we've talked a good amount about life, and we're actually making good time. Let's ignore life. (laughs) No, let's talk about some shows, anime, and movies, movies, movies. 
So, Yuzukin-chan, tell me. Oh, right, what? Talk about, talk about some highlight shows, animes, or movies that you watched so far this 2020. Well, you and I finally watched through all the Matrix together, first and foremost. That's the one that comes right off the top of my head because I still can't stop thinking about it or getting sad about it. <laughs> <laughs> we did watch that. I have it on Blu ray. And uh, she told me some time ago while she was in Oregon. Uh, that she watched it with her with her boyfriend and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, wait, you've never watched The Matrix before? And you've been friends with me for years? Yeah. I'm like, as you guys should probably know, my username was Dark Anderson EX, and if you were there for last Spoodcast, you guys know that, you know, I had a Matrix-related question, and it's the reason my screen name was the way my screen name was, so Matrix really had a big influence on me. Even to this very day, since I've been, I've been into the Matrix, I've been wearing sunglasses. It went from because of that, too, just because I like wearing sunglasses, and if I don't, I'm blind. So... Because we in California. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it was a really big and important series for me. She avoided watching the sequels, and saved that for moi. And uh, we got to watch that. It was her first time watching the sequels. It was my I don't know how many time re-watching the sequels and all that shit. On Blu-ray, on my big ass TV, 42 inches, and uh... Wow, flexing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> flex. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we shared a lot of moments. Like, I, I think I come to appreciate a lot, like, about the... Philosophy? of what the uh, sequel movies brought because uh, there was a lot more like you know cool action or whatever sort of so to speak of like the first movie but then like you know it gets really philosophical for the sequels and in that respect it's a lot more like you know adult versus like edgy teen whatever 13 year old boy that wants to just see like some cool action shit but there was still like you know some pretty like I I can appreciate these action sequences like you know neo fighting the 5000 smiths in the area and some of the combat choreography that went on there and the like the ghost twins like a lot of the fight scenes were really great and reloaded because revolutions uh, excuse me i burped was a lot more focused on the humans versus the machines it spent a lot more time outside of the matrix than in the matrix but of course that would make sense cuz the whole main plot throughout the entire series was about, you know, the post-apocalyptic world of the humans and machines. So, I guess in that retrospect, you know, that is what it is. I am physically trying to grab the Blu-ray that he speaks of without fucking dropping everything, because the, the, the case is pretty. Did any of you guys know that how they made the, uh, the Matrix text, you know, the iconic fallen green text, was just by finding a bunch of Japanese cuisine recipes and just jumbling them together? I'm pretty sure that that's a well-known fact by now, I just find it fascinating. The Wachowskis are weebs, basically. <laughs> Yeah, we watched The Matrix together, and it was a really emotional experience, especially when some certain people died. It was a really, really emotional moment, because the <laughs> Saki made it very clear, and she quotes... Oh my god, well, I don't remember now. You don't remember what you said? They're the only straight couple that matters! <laughs> I say that a lot, actually, but now that... Now that you have that on record, I guess I have to go by my word. Neo and Trinity are the only straight couple that matters. I hope I didn't fuck my mic up. I don't think I did. <laughs> no, that's not your mic. Okay. That's the mic. Okay, that's... <laughs> Anyways. I've got stoner energy. I'm sorry. Wow. She's not even bongo-san yet. Outside of the Matrix, what other stuff have you watched that I didn't really see with you? So, I've been keeping up with an anime. Well, me and my boyfriend have been keeping up with an anime called... Isokin, or full name, keep your hands off Isokin. And the very abridged plot is, is that a bunch of high school girls want to become animators together and have an animator club. Their school isn't letting them for some asinine reason, so they just say, fuck you, we're gonna start a film club and just do it under the table then. Because it compiles of, you know, your generic, like, animator nerd, a girl who is actually um, a model and was raised to be a model, and that's what her parents want for her. They don't want her to go into animation. And then the third friend has kind of no clue 
about anything regarding animation whatsoever, but she's, you know, the brains of the group, and they, and she sees that her two friends have, you know, the, uh, the energy and the inspiration needed, so she's just like, all right, if I can set you two straight, we can do this. And the whole premise of it is, is just, you know, a bunch of high school girls dicking around, drawing robots together and everything, and just, you know, learning how to enjoy your passions with people who want to see you succeed and enjoy that with you, and just a surprising amount of parental influence and basically what i'm trying to say is basically is is that there is a lot of push from parental figures for these girls to actually do what it is that they want to do and it's incredibly refreshing from many plots that you see that are like no you can't do that we want you to do this instead you know so it's a breath of fresh air honestly every episode is so refreshing and just so fucking funny It's a really great anime, and the opening is always stuck in my head, and it is a 12-episode series, very quick watch. I believe it's still currently airing as we speak. It only started in January, so if you have access to Crunchyroll, please support the official release. Wow. Wow. Can you see that? She just fucking inserted a Crunchyroll, like, sponsorship, and we're not even sponsored by Crunchyroll. And she even went as far as to do the fucking abridgers. Please support the official release. Well, yes. <laughs> I'm Jesus. Like, usually I'm like, if you got a pirate anime, I get it. But with this anime in specific, this is the first time I've ever really delved into the production team behind it as well. Please support the official release. Like, over half of it is made by college students who are studying abroad and are still only between mine and Dante's age. And it is fantastic to see because of how much quality and how much work and time and love clearly goes into the production, both animation-wise, voice acting-wise, and writing-wise. It's the anime we all need. But is it the anime we deserve? No, it's not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Clearly. We don't deserve Isokin. Is there uh, anything else you've seen so far? Not other than rewatches, honestly. And all of that I kind of can't even think of off the top of my head. While I do have a lot of non-Japanese, so like non-anime material. Which is what we're talking about. We're talking about shows or movies. So. Okay, perfect. Well, then there is another show that I watched recently on Netflix. It's a Netflix original series that just wrapped up its first season called I Am Not Okay With This. It's basically about a tiny traumatized... She's basically... It's basically about the new Carrie of our generation, of the 2020s. High school girl trying to cope with her, her dad's death, her sexuality, and suddenly realizing that all of her psychological issues are now giving her uh, telepathy. Like I said, she's basically a little traumatized lesbian Carrie. So that's basically what the whole show is about. And it's starring one of the main kids from Stranger Things, if you are into that. So it's a really great commentary. They stay very consistent about talking about these issues and seeing every little possible route that your anxieties and your trauma and your inability to cope with things comes from. But they also show it in a way where the protagonist isn't just, you know, staying in her bubble of sadness and trauma. She's, you know, doing her best to, you know, rise up above it with what she is working with, which is unfortunately not a lot, because sometimes life be like that, but it's realistic and relatable for hopefully a lot of people, and I recommend also checking that out immensely if those are kind of some topics you feel like you can stomach, or maybe you feel like will set you in the right direction. Awesome. Yeah! Yeah! One of those, one of those you're not alone kind of moments. Mm -hmm. I've also been kind of in, in and out watching another older, older show called Six Feet Under. I'm, I've, uh, that nod, do you perhaps know what it is? Nope. All right, basically it's about a family of uh, funeral workers and the father is very suddenly and tragically killed 
when he gets hit by a bus. And <laughs> I feel like you were trying to not laugh at I'm just not. the rhetoric of him getting hit by a bus. No. Okay, because I feel bad for kind of smiling now. <laughs> Wow. So anyways, yeah, it's about a family of funeral workers. Dad suddenly and tragically passes away. And it's just like a look into all of the family members' lives as they try to, you know, sort of juggle the sudden loss of their father and also what it is like to work in a funeral home. As you can see, as you can point it to me, I lost my dad about a year ago. So as you can tell, I gravitate towards media and characters whom are dealing with that because I find it very therapeutic for myself. So anyways, it's a black comedy. It is very funny. A uh, big of the, part of the comedy is um, seeing, you know, apparitions of corpses that this family are perhaps uh, working on or, work, you know, working on at the request of the deceased family, but also, you know, apparitions of their dad. So it's it's also another very refreshing show that I've been tuning into every now and again, not necessarily chronologically, but, you know, just whenever my mom is watching it. It was something that she enjoyed very much so when my sister and I were growing up, so... Having bits of pieces of memories from growing up and seeing her watching it, I find I gravitate towards it for that reason as well. So yeah, I like watching things that deal with very grim topics and very... Also, just generally hard to deal with topics because, you know, it just... I guess you can say it just feels easier to cope with now that I have some exposure to it. And they also help you realize that you're not alone when you're dealing with these things. So if you feel like that my coping mechanisms may possibly work for you, hey, all the power to you. Just remember to take care of yourself in the meantime. And get a Netflix so you can watch some of these. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what's been on my radar for... 2020 so far in terms of watching and life events as far as I can think of Awesome Got pretty decked out there. Indeed. I did for the three weeks Three or four weeks. I, I lost track that since the last bootcast I actually almost didn't have a Netflix because originally the Netflix I had the account was from one of my corporate managers from Vive Guys, and now he uh, changed the password either because he forgot about me or he doesn't want me to have it anymore. Fuck. But I found out that the Xfinity account that me Padres have also come with Netflix, so I just did a little work, got that rerouted, and now I have Netflix again. Yay. So I was able to go watch um, an Adam Sandler movie. Is it Adam Sandler? It's Waterboy Adam Sandler? Is that who he is? Yeah, we watched Waterboy. I watched Waterboy. I don't know why I said we, but I meant I. And, uh... Great time to watch Waterboy after getting My Restless Nightmares, Dirty Little Sinners out, because... <laughs> there's water, and then there's football! <laughs> it was a movie that, you know, really had that whole... The whole premise of, you know, this guy was formerly a Waterboy. He was the underdog. He got bullied by a lot of people. Suddenly, he could play football because all of his, like... Bullying trauma gets him into this, like, fucking juggernaut power to just fucking do football shit. Tackle- Spite. He tackle people who was, like, bigger than him like it was fucking nothing. And, uh, yeah. So, as the movie progressed, you know, you get to see the underdog rise, and it was really emotional for me, because I, I always have a little soft spot for the underdog and rising as kind of feeling like one myself. So... It was a really feel-good movie, and now there's a song that played at the credits that's now in my head sometimes uh, calls Love You More Than Yesterday. It's a pretty, pretty good song. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it was a cover. It was by this other band. Uh, they're called Goldfingers, I think, or Goldfinger. They did the uh, one of the songs from Tony Hawk, so that's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, I couldn't find it anywhere. It's only on YouTube. Uh, other than that... Uh, since now that I've got anime back in my life with Netflix, I actually went to go find out that the rest of Psyche Xuno, Xuno, the disastrous life of Psyche K in English, um, part of it was on Netflix, which was what I watched, and it was like the first two slash three seasons or whatever. I think it was like an OVA for quote unquote season three. Um, as all of you know, previously, Psyche 
is a really fast-paced comedy anime revolving around uh, a guy with psychic powers at god level, but he tries to keep it low-key, but life keeps making him use his psychic powers or something amongst the sorts, and uh, it's a really cool, fun anime that I finished not too long, and I really love it, and I found out that the sequel to Psyche K, uh, Psyche Reawakened or whatever, just was now on Netflix, because I remember seeing it earlier on my anime list, and I'm just like, ooh, I can't wait to uh, go see that, and so I got to do that, and there was only like six episodes, but um, it was uh, it was really entertaining getting back into it, and yeah, no, like it, it takes kind of place while before the events of season two was over, kind of thing. It had like pretty much all the characters. So it was just it was a fresh of breath there of getting back to like all of the characters and their little quirks. It may not be anything new for some people. It could be the same shit. In fact, like the first episode, I felt like I was watching. I thought I was back on the previous season again, which felt weird. But then I realized, oh no, it's new content. Uh, the ending felt a little quick, but, you know, it, it still, like, made me feel something before the end of it, because the whole pr premise of that season was Psyche was supposed to be done with his powers, and he just wanted to live a normal life, but then s turns out he uh, wasn't actually getting that, and then something happens that forces him to do something. So, it was really cool. Other than that, the other anime that I'm watching now was one that I've had interest for years since Anime Expo, but now I'm finally watching it, was Akame Ga Kill. And fuck! It's been a while since I've watched, like, you know, action animes that, you know, have that... who are, aren't afraid to go dark or show some grotesque things or dark topics, and... When I saw that first episode to see like, oh my god, everything that mattered to this protagonist is dead. I'm just like, bruh. And then, uh, yeah, seeing like, you know, the whole rebellion against the corrupt empire, you know. This is stuff that I, I can appreciate, especially with something that I'm writing myself. And it, it, it's, it, I forgot what it's like to watch characters you care about die. Because then I had like two of them, <laughs> two of them that I cared for and then they die and I'm like, oh my god, why? <laughs> So, I'm starting to, like, resonate with Tatsumi's, like, fucking struggle as he watches people that he cared about died and just, you know, feeling like he's not strong enough to, like, protect everybody. And, you know, I'm, I'm 20 episodes in out of 24. I'm almost done. I guarantee you, by the time this spoodcast is actually uploaded versus the recording date, or within this week, I will finish watching the series and probably start my next anime on... Kage Guri or whatever, that gambling anime, because that's showing up on Netflix, and I guess I'm t taking interest in that, and uh, yeah, so and yes, I, I, I am one of the trash people who supports the S death ship, and I really hope uh, you all, you guys who watch this anime probably know how it ends but, I, I want something to come out of that don't, don't try not to spoil that for me, Saki. <laughs> I, I'm I'm doing my best, and I'm doing a damn good job. Cause like I said, I don't remember jack shit from when I watched it a rather longish time ago. Right. However long ago from when it. Came. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much the general uh, stuff that Saki and I have watched, and stuff that I have watched. Um, now that I've got my own Netflix, I'm probably going to go a little more free. Because I kind of held back a bit. Because I didn't want, like, all the shit I was watching to show up on my corporate managers. Like, you've watched this. No, I haven't. But you did. I get, I get to do my own thing now. But yeah. My only struggle with that is everything that I've watched on his is obviously now have never been watched before on my Netflix. So they're, like, trying to be like, as I hit the like button, they're like, hey, you should watch this. But I already did. <laughs> so yeah that's pretty much it now that we've talked about shows animes or movies let's talk about video games you good I don't know why I decided to make a gag where I say video games like I'm constipated <sighs> if anything, I feel like people are just gonna make jokes about you nutting, especially with the fact that there was a girl in the room. 
Well, now that you fucking changed the context of that from a shitty joke to a dirty joke, thanks. You're Maybe welcome. Now people will, but don't. Think about shit, because people are stealing toilet paper. So, Saki, hmm. have you played any games 2020? Um, I played... I replayed Yumi Nikki for the first time in like a year, actually. In a oh. while that I, since I've done that. I love Yumi Nikki. Please talk to me about it. I also finally fully played through uh, the remake. And that was actually a lot of fun. I really liked this person, the um. Rendition of it? Yeah, I really like the new rendition of it because as opposed to a remake, it just feels as if it's more of like a, not quite a sequel, but pretty much a sequel. Basically what happens right, right, right after the ending of the first original classic game from 2004. And it's terrifying. I will admit it, the Yume Nikki remake is a pretty fucking scary game. The first one's unsettling. This one's scary. But it was made by a studio that did a lot of fantastic work with model work, with the scenery. Many, many classic characters, including Madotsuke herself, were perfectly renditioned, perfectly redesigned, alongside bringing aside a completely new and interesting cast of NPCs and other fun areas that you can explore through. Um... Of course, it's not ever going to be like the original classic game, and at this point, I feel like I'm just at an age where I should realize remakes just be like that. So, having cast that mindset aside, I was able to enjoy the game pretty much for exactly what it is. It was much more challenging, honestly, in terms of the core gameplay, as it still stays the same as the classic game, where you just collect, uh little power boosters known as effects that are mostly cosmetic, but some help you with the, uh, with the gameplay. So, they added a bunch of new stuff to that. Uh, they made effect seeking in the new game a lot more harder rather than just droning and taking a long time in the first game. So having a challenge was really, really new and refreshing and really invested me, so on so forth, I could run back in a circle of everything I described before. It was a very fun game, very fun for its price point of 20 bucks. I would say the money was well worth it, and that you should totally check it out, that if you would like to, if that perhaps interests you, if you also like girls who may or may not be dealing with trauma. <laughs> There's a theme to what she does in her media. Exactly! <laughs> that's, that's about as much gaming as you did this year? Well, there's also the fact that I, you and I, I guess one could say technically, played through Yakuza 0. Or at starting. Least starting. Starting point, at least. I still have not gotten onto it on my own yet, but I'm finally getting through that series as well. I think it's just the length of it how many games there are and what have you that always intimidated me. I mean, yes, I could say the same exact thing because that's what I was trying to hold back myself. And then I bought it, and then I was like, and then I started it, and then I, once you get deep enough, you're like, I don't fucking care anymore. I, I do want more Yakuza. Like, I didn't get to the fandom where I am right now if I didn't find it, like, interesting or fascinating or fun to deal with. Um, I've been meaning to show Saki Yakuza for a long time. I can... I tend to be a little stubborn with getting into new media. That is something that I'm, I like to say that I'm <clears throat> uh, starting to crack down on and sort of just push aside as I get older because I'm now realizing that every, sing every single time that someone has gotten me into something new, I've always enjoyed it. So what is stopping me? For example, Devil May Cry. Exactly. I got her into Devil May Cry. Rather, you got me back into it. <laughs> so, there's that. Um, she she got she has it on Steam. It was there was a sale for four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. Because that there was that whole Sega sales collection, and uh, so we we were watching, so to speak, on YouTube. Um, 
I really, for the sake of her, when she's gonna game, the real thing she'll be enjoying would be a lot of the exclusive side content for that game, because there's like, you know, obviously a lot, like, do in the game, and mm -hmm. um, that's probably most of what her PC experience is going to be. But other than that, I do want her to watch, like, the some of the stuff for special reasons mm -hmm. that she will finally come to understand mm -hmm. once she finally gets there. Mm -hmm. A lot of, as Zack and Diz know, there are certain messages that have been trying to get across through that that I've been dying for years, and they understand as they get to those points. So... Soon, soon. <laughs> um, yeah, well, that was. Besides that, that was pretty much it. Yeah, that's pretty much all I can think of. My my leisurely time has been few and far in between, but I enjoy what I can. Yeah. So for video games on my end, I've only played two, but I've been doing this new thing that I mentioned last bootcast where I'm doing a lot more watching. This usually goes with games that I was interested in but couldn't get the time to play, or um, I did play and I stopped and I don't know when I'll really pick it up because I'm trying to play other games. So since the last bootcast, I've been I was like watching like the entire Deus Ex series, not the fucking Infinity War or whatever. Um, that was definitely not. It's not called Infinity War. But in something the sequel to the very first game so I watched the very first game which was really cool like it was amazing like how much death that game had for the time it was released and uh, I thought that was really cool then I finally got to see what the rest of Human Revolution was like because that was the only Deus Ex old oh, no I did play both of those briefly but I never got fully invested to keep playing them at a certain point there was a certain time where I would play games for a bit and then I wouldn't finish them and this was usually in the beginning and uh that was one of them. When I got to see the rest of Human Revolution, I was expecting what I thought I was expecting, but I, it, it it was. I mean, it still was a little bit of a revenge kind of plot line for Adam, but then like you know all the usual conspiracy shit you come to expect from the Deus Ex series, since there's a lot of like you know corrupted powers like the Illuminati being played and all that jazz you know there was some cool stuff like that going on obviously it's never going to live up to like how deep the first game was but it's still cool that it was what it was and especially with the ending what really fucking shook my fucking balls was obviously the game after that the the sequel to Deus Ex <laughs> Mankind Divided was the part where I was just like this was that sequel that didn't need to happen because as I was witnessing it was basically could have been like a DLC thing or whatever there was no main like real impact of the main story it felt like just an episode in itself and the ending was shit it just felt like they were just milking out more money for Deus Ex and then it really got on my uh, got on my nerves when I saw DLC stories that probably sounded more interesting but by then I was Deus Ex out Especially with how lackluster the sequel looked, or how it played story-wise. Then I got to around to, uh, I watched a little bit of Death Stranding, because I was definitely not interested in its gameplay. I really tuned out of Death Stranding for a long time, when people were just getting confused on what the fuck it was. I was just like, yeah, no, um, it's... It's not what I'm looking for. And uh, the story was something I was still interested in watching, and it's it's, it's alright so far, it's interesting. But I, I paused and I never got back to finishing that. That's almost as if I was playing the game and stopping it. Instead, I went to go visit other games that I got to start and not finish, which was... Uh, um, Killer is Dead, which was that uh, by the same people that made Killer7. Um, that was really cool to watch. And I really actually, if I do get the time to like revisit it, I would definitely love to play that myself and see how I'll fare up compared to what I saw on the screen and do a little more than what was shown. Um, obviously weird cool ideas and some amusing little character banter here and there and all that shit. Um, and a really good soundtrack. I love good soundtracks. <laughs> and uh, an ending that that wasn't what you'd expect and you, you just have to be like, all right, yeah, that was an ending kind of deal. Whereas Lollipop Chainsaw, Lollipop motherfucking Chainsaw was exactly as I was going to expect. You know, all that crazy, ridiculous high school girl 
or college girl, I don't know, she's, I can't tell, uh, chopping, the, the school is like fucking huge, chopping down zombies with a chainsaw and having her boyfriend dangling off her fucking chainsaw as an accessory and all that shit, all that fun banter and knowing more, seeing more of her family as they deal with the eventual crisis and all the drama that comes with it. It's minor drama, of course, it was definitely on the cheesy side and uh, that one I'm not sure if I'd come back to immediately because I did I, I remember I wasn't too in love with the gameplay, but we'll see. We'll see um, Other than that games that I actually got to play. Oh wait last one was last of us the DLC Which was left behind where we get to watch a mix of what Ellie did while escorting Joel the stabbed Joel and treating him versus her past with her lesbian friend who dies because that's what the game tells us happened and uh, that was really I was really cute and emotional and all that stuff I was just like wow that's some good stuff so um, yeah that was all the watching for games that I actually played uh, during the hype of getting my restless nightmares dirty little sinners out yeah I was pretty hyped for Silent Hill 3 myself I almost really felt fired up to write a script for that even though I said I should be focusing on other things but in, what I did do was play the game just to see uh, what I've unlocked because I know I got I like to have all the tools that I can have for that game because I know I can do some good shit with that so I went to go play it on hard with like double the ammo pickup and it was still hard with double the ammo pickup and uh, for some reason I thought I should be fighting enemies to try to get 333 kills so I can get the heather beam because I know I want the heather beam but fuck why did I try to do that I almost got really stuck with the final boss because it does shit ton of damage and I'm like running out of health items and I only have so much ammo and weaponry to work with and uh I realized after pulling out the lightsaber, that was what I should have stuck with and I wouldn't have died two more times or whatever. But fuck, that was insane. And then I just ran through the game again on easy mode with, with the infinite submachine gun just to just shoot everything down and just have what I called a speed gun of the game. Instead of speed run. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that for all studying purposes and materials uh, broadcast on that. Um, but I do want to get a backwards compatible PlayStation 3 so I can record it on better, better quality because I, one of the things I do feel shameful with Silent Hill 2's Spood was uh, that I record off the PlayStation 2 and like as well I get to keep like the quality of the game's graphics like you know making sure some effects are still there the way it was intended the way it was built versus like the PC version or the fucking Xbox version or especially the HD collection shitty edition like it was there were some moments where you can barely see or you know you could see like you know stretching was being stretched um, I wanted to record it on a PlayStation 3 where you can have actually true 720 you know resolution which would be cool to have for Silent Hill 3 so gonna transfer all my data on that I did buy the PlayStation 3 for that so it'll be on the way and so I'll get that going and making sure that any future PlayStation 2 spoot I do is on quality PlayStation 3 and hopefully it won't yellow light on me as as much because I have a, another PlayStation 3 to play a PlayStation 3 games with my PlayStation 3 backwards compatible one is just my better hardware PlayStation 2 uh -huh. as you guys already know I discussed a little bit on that last bootcast with Sean Clark so other than that, um, Diz reawoken my desire to play Resident Evil 6 after watching her and her friend Jazz play a little bit together. So now I have a PlayStation Plus, and uh, we've been playing through Leon's campaign, like one day per chapter. Like, uh, she got to see how much of a badass I am with that game after like, uh, eight years of that game. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I still got I still got my skills, but there are some moments where I can't cover up when my partner slacks off a little. Diz sometimes just gets herself caught in those. Yeah, this was this was made to kill you. Unless you got it drilled in your brain, you're gonna die. To this part, happened to her a few times, especially with Lepetitsa, the fucking gas spewing monster hentai thing that just cuts your health down like fucking. <sighs> like fucking dicing up a tomato and like in at the speed of light she just died like that um she didn't have the proper defense but after that um 
yeah, then some instant kills moments that she could have avoided, or one that was definitely my fault because I was reloading when we got eaten by a giant shark. So, uh, we've been having some of that and having some cool shenanigans and making Resident Evil 6 references now that um, we ended up did doing that whole, uh, what Sean said uh, one spootcast ago about like watching our parodies together. So we did do that, and now that they've seen Resident Evil 6, I could just make all those parodies with them, and I'm just like, yeah. So, that's, that was most of my gaming. A lot of it now in these days is watching shit that I don't get to get around to, but there are still games that I do get to play. And, um, for once, I didn't play Yakuza! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> that was the exact one I was referencing. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am here all weekend. Uh, <sighs> More like you're here. <laughs> More like you're here for an hour and some change. Yes, but turn your change into dollars, please. Hey. Anyways. Um, yeah, I, I I almost was tempted to, like, do a little bit more of the, like, go to Yakuza 5 and play the Hostess Club thing really briefly, just so I could say I played Yakuza. <laughs> but then, as you already know, my, uh, my work and English work and trying to be Darker Bridger is kind of making that kind of hard. So, um, yeah. I'll get back into it. Eventually. Um, before we transfer to our next segment, I do want to briefly mention that Saki did play a little bit of Judgment. Yeah, that is actually what my... I forgot to mention this earlier. That was sort of my segue into finally getting into the Yakuza series, was watching my boyfriend play a little bit of Judgment as it came out. And... <laughs> after I made that fucking jank-ass pinball machine, my bitch, I wanted to get into Somehow. The, somehow, some way, on that stupid fucking uni-generated goddamn pinball machine. After somehow getting that out of the way and getting to explore gameplay on my own, I was like, this is exactly what I want right now. And so I finally opened myself up to wanting to experience the actual Yakuza series. And... Little old me likes to go through things uh, chronologically, so... Which is good, because there's the whole fact that the remakes were based off whatever happens <gasps> in Zero. Or at least they made... <gasps> oh my god, this is not happening right now. <laughs> 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 that, that, like, the Kiwami games had, like, inclusions of shit that happens in Zero for the sake of, uh... Recap, basically, I guess you could say. Or, you know, making sure that Zero wasn't just a prequel that happened that never became relevant in the in the games after. Mm. Obviously, up until 3, that's where it doesn't matter, because the HD collection is far from 1988. But, yeah, at least the first two games made it really relevant. So, yeah. Other than that, that was, that was all of our video gaming talk. Now to move on to our little discussion topic. Oh, and I have been very excited about this ever since it was presented to me as a question. So let's get right to it. You take it away first, though. Great. We live in this day and age where the term indie was supposed to be used as, you know, a company or organization or not company or organization, but a little group that's that's like independent from, you know, those higher ups, those triple A studios, all that stuff for like either movies, TVs, or games, and you know, they were just like a little niche kind of group thing, you know, people would find them just by chance, you know, like the indie games, like Yume Nikki before it exploded kind of thing, and now we live in this era where it feels like indie is ironically, <laughs> he said ironically with like indie fucking hipsters, <laughs> anyways, we live in this age where it feels like now in these days it's ironically mainstream, indie media has become a lot more common than, you know, like it's just on the same ground as like, you know, all those things, especially when you think about games like Untitled Goose Game, which was an indie game, and yet it was good enough to make itself fucking show up on the awards. <laughs> Or other indie games that was like, uh, what? Like Undertale. Exactly. Und Undertale's a perfect example. That was probably, like, what really started it, I'd say. 
right? So, you know, there was a lot of indie material, even music or some music artists go big or whatever, or there's some indie movies that, you know, get their spotlight somewhere. But yeah, so the real question, the whole point of this whole conversation is, does indie media truly feel indie? Or is that just its own form of like, it's another form of mainstream, it's just you know, commonplace or something. Take it away, Saki. All right. She is the uh, professor of this uh, topic. <laughs> that is why I've specifically saved this one for her. All right, I guess, I guess I've got some credibility in this. All right, so you honestly hit the nail right on the head with the definition, and I think that the definition on text still holds to this day. Indie games, indeed, are still made by just... A group of people wanting to dick around, you know, they want to create something that want, that they want or are at least hoping will leave an impact. And I think that my answer is really short because that's what it really all boils down to is, is that indie games in this society, all things considered, uh, in this society now seem to be gravitated towards because simply the demographic in this day and age wants to c consume something media-wise that, you know, I guess more than anything else, they feel like that they can actually connect with on a very, very deep and personal level. And as someone who is part of that demographic and, you know, is part of the more politically driven Gen X crowd, I simply just don't enjoy material that is given to me from big corporations as all of them seem, at least to me, just to be big money grabbers, you know? Now these days with lots of classic games like Dead or Alive now being, which went from a pure fighter game which you could unlock everything from, now turning into literally a money grabbing business with microtransactions everywhere you fucking look, at least almost at $900 or $300 of microtransactions of DLC. Yeah. So, my whole point of this is is that I I f I do and I feel that other people tend to gravitate towards indie media now because it still upholds the core value that media that we consume should drive us. It should evoke some kind of emotion within us whether it be extreme happiness because we can empathize with the joy that a protagonist or maybe another character in what we're consuming deals with or whether you know it's the kind of anger that they go through whatever grief they go through just you know their experiences all together you know we as humans we want to be able to connect with those things and many people in around like my age or honestly just you know most anyone i have asked nowadays of this question you know i've generally gotten that answer that from bigger studios and what have you a lot of what they make just doesn't feel genuine anymore the writing is everything that they create is just good enough and that's not good enough anymore so my point is is that indie companies are like I said, they're really popping up now and seeming to take to stake claim on what is more popular now because they're run by actual people and not people who just want your money so they know exactly, you know, what it is that they want to write, what it is that they want to convey, what kind of characters they want to create, what do these characters go through, how do they cope with what it is that they're going through, do they cope with it at all, you know. We want to be able to ask those questions when we come across a character in some form of media, no matter what, because at the end of the day, that is the human experience, to be able to empathize with others, to be able to think that, you know, sort of just to ourselves, deconstruct a person down for the sake of being able to empathize with them and realize that in ourselves, we are not alone. We go through all of these experiences together and we should not be isolating ourselves. We should not be putting up these walls. So, you know, that is exactly what I feel that indie media was first created for and why it is, you know, has taken the reins at this point because so many people of this generation share that sentiment and it has become 
much more widespread than ever because we're all just so fucking tired of cynicism and nihilism and just staying complacent because we have no other choice. We want to grow positively and we want to be able to make our own future. And this is the kind of hope that we get from, you know, this type of media. Because honestly, like I said before, it tends to have more meaningful writing. It tends to have more meaningful characters. It tends to, you know, just really shake you up on the inside the way that, you know, games like ga any kind of media, honestly, came out that came out like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, because whoo, I can say there were not nearly as many money grabbers, you know, when I was younger, maybe when you were younger as well on top. So, that's sort of my, uh, two cents on that. That's pretty much all I can say on the matter is, is that, basically, indie media tends to cater to what we really want to evoke in ourselves emotionally and is not just trying to grab our money. And that is exactly what media should be all about. It should always be about finding a way to have people ask themselves questions within themselves that perhaps they've been neglecting for a long time and that they can grow from positively from there on out. God. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is Professor Saki's two cents on the whole is Indian media truly indie because of the reason she has stated because it's not corrupted or blinded by the corporate agenda. Well, that will <laughs> that will have to wrap it up for that because that is pretty much pretty much all I can say is really nothing that she's already stated before, or she probably even has it stronger than moi. So, now that we've wrapped up that, it is time to move on to the next big thing, the part everybody loves. All my guests love in this podcast. It's Dante's bullshit quiz game. Dante. I was trying to burp right after you announced that, but it wasn't happening. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. All right. Yes, I can turn. Welcome to Dante's Bullshit Quiz Game, where I pick five questions of several media, both shows, uh, games, maybe music, and some Dante-related questions, usually cater to the guest and what I believe they know, and, uh, ask you the questions. You can either answer it off the top of your head for ten points, or I can give you an A, B, C, and D for five points. Whatever you get wrong is subtracted from whichever one you go with, so if you pick, if you answer off the top of your head and it's wrong, it's minus ten points. If you did A, B, C, D, it's minus five points. Whatever, uh, whatever the points get you up to will get you a prize, or maybe not, because maybe the points don't even matter. Hey. Last time Sean had reached negative ten or fifteen, one of the two, he got himself a boot to the head. <laughs> What will your second John make with her points today? Let's find out. An ass out of both of us, probably. <laughs> Let's find out. Are you ready, your second John? Just a quick question before we get started. Is there any kind of point deduction if I initially, w let's say I want to try to answer off the top of my head, but then maybe I realize, oh shit, I need a, I need the A, B, C, D option instead. Will there be a point deduction if I decide I want to change how to answer? No. Cool. All right. Wait, awesome. I mean, you have, you pick one or the other is what okay. I'm saying. All right. So if I pick, all right. So I have to stick with my choice no matter what then. Yep. All basically. Right. Okay. Awesome. Well, time to make an ass out of both of us. Alrighty, here we are. Here is the first question. What was the one special thing with Dante's DMC through Spood episodes that were Blu-rayed? Oh, fuck! Ta-da! <laughs> Dude, okay. There was a special motive behind the Blu-ray episodes. Oh my god, I do not remember because that it has been this long since we watched through them together. There's my negative 10 already. <laughs> you can get A, B, C, and D. You'll get five points, and if you get it wrong, you'll lose five points. Okay, we'll go with the A, B, C, D option. Alrighty. <clears throat> A. It had way more sound effects. B. The voices were more consistent. 
C. The Dante and Lady fight. D. He released it after three years of the OG release. <laughs> Is there an all of the above option? No. <laughs> That's not even me answering, seriously, just to give you shit. Wow. <laughs> um, I'm honest, I gravitate towards uh, B, though. Voices are more consistent. That's what I gravitate towards. Is that your final answer? Uh, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. The main answer, the answer is D, that I released it three years after the original release, because Devil May Cry 3, three years later. Yes, it does contain everything that I did mention, A, B, C, and D, but my main motive of doing it was the fact that it was three years, along with the fact that I did want to, like, obviously smooth it out. It was just cool that I coincidentally did it three years after its original release. Yeah, see, because it was coincidental, I wouldn't have thought of that. I were, I think more towards what your work ethic is and what you want to make, what, basically how you want to improve yourself. You didn't think I was just clever enough to pick three years? I think that because of the fact it was coincidental that that's exactly what it was. Oh. <laughs> oh. Better luck next time. Oh, well. All right. Here's our next question. Question number two. What is the color of Marotsuki's eyes? That depends, actually. On the specific item, the effect that I'm thinking of. Red. Is that your final answer? Yes. Correct. Yay! Of course I would know that. For bonus points, which effect specifically gives her that? The cat effect. Congratulations, you have gotten yourself up to 10 points. Yay! That bonus question was worth 5 points. I should have known that she'd know about that one. Of, of course. So, for, for a little more explanation, please explain how you find the other colors for eyes. This is just for pure trivia. So, uh, the best and most canonical design that you can go off of is her original 2004 pixelated RPG maker design. And you're gonna see the, that her eyes are closed. That is the entire point of the game. She is, even when she is awake, her eyes are just closed the entire time. However you want to interpret that is completely up to you. That said, you never actually see her eye color except for the effect that I mentioned before. The cat effect, where it's another passive effect, kind of. It does actually uh, attract NPCs closer to you. You'll find that to be useful if you play it. You'll see how. But uh, it attracts NPCs closer to you. But what happens to Madutsuki herself is, is that she grows cat ears. And when you uh, when you use the effect, she does the l uh, little Maneki Neko uh, pawing whilst holding a coin and her eyes open and they are just fully red. And so because of that, many fans have come to interpret her eye color as red because, hey, if her full eye color is red, you know, maybe that's what her actual eye color is because, you know, why would that be? So yeah. But other renditions you may see of her, her eyes will usually be brown or black or gray, you know. The red is the most striking, but I think it is the most fitting and makes the most sense and also just looks cool as shit. <laughs> so yeah, that is uh, where that comes from. Perfect. Yay. All right, on to question three. Yay. This one's about music. Oh, fuck. The version slash remixes remix of Billie Eilish's classic Ocean Eyes that I listened to. Which remix is that? Oh my god. Um, I can hear it perfectly in my head, yet I have completely forgotten what remix it is. I don't know. Would you like A, B, C, and D? A, B, C, and D, yes. Here we go. A, Astrology Remix. B, Black Bear Remix. C, Cautious Clacks. D, Gold House. Astrology. Is that your final answer? Yes. I, yes! I, Yay! I knew it! I was like, I know Bla I listen to Black Bear's music, that was not him, and I have never even heard of the other two in my goddamn life. So, astrology? It's got that bounce to it. It's, like, it's almost the same as the original, but it, it just, you know... It adds more oomph. 
Yeah. I like that one a lot. <laughs> oh, I know you do. Yeah. All right. Question four. You're doing really good. Sorry. I'm <laughs> You're doing really good at this so far. You're probably the best contestant I've had so far. <laughs> Question four. How many steps does it take Zim to get on his throne in Enter the Florpus? <laughs> How did you find this out? By watching it. Oh my god. Yeah, see, I only watched it twice. I didn't even think of that. Let's do A, B, C, D. A, zero. B, three. C, four. D, five. See, the fucked up thing right now is is that I'm think I'm thinking of zero not as my answer, but just as like knowing Zim so well. What the fuck could the zero be? <laughs> so ah, shit, I think my answer is gonna be four. Is that your final answer? That's gonna be my final answer because I'm hopeless otherwise. <laughs> That's what I thought. The answer is zero. What? Because he doesn't actually get on it, the chair just slams into him and brings him up. He does not jump at it at all. Exactly. That's fucking right! <laughs> See, I don't know the movie very well. I know the series very well, though. Yeah. <laughs> but I had to pick something that... Would have th thrown me, because you know... Thrown me? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew. Zing. You knew that after I would get those two f bonus questions just for me correctly, you need something that was gonna knock me back on my feet. Or on my ass. There's the correct euphemism. Knock me on my ass. There we go. Yep. All right. Are you ready for the final question? No. This one I had to modify after, after we made it very clear that she knows the answer to that one. In John Mulaney's Xanax story, John tells the doctor he urinates this many times. Eleven. Is that your final answer? I think so. I want- for some reason I'm remembering eleven and nothing is popping into my mind, so yes. Congratulations! You are correct. It is 11 times, which is a lot more nor a lot more than a person normally urinates. My I, I can't believe I remembered that. What the fuck? Well, adult life is usually pretty goddamn weird. So, my original it was a John Mulaney question, and it, my original question was going to be how many what's new pussycats would play before you get one it's not unusual or how is he, he what was the i'm trying to think of the exact phrasing that mr mulaney himself used doctors all over have asked can you make a grown man cry with tom jones's is not unusual and the answer is yes as so long or I don't As it's preceded by seven, seven what's, or, yes. what's new pussycat? I could have just deducted your points for fucking up that quote. <laughs> just for the hell of it. I didn't know if you were gonna talk or not. Give me a break. So, that being said, Yosuke Jen, your points total up to 20. Which is the most points anyone on this fucking show has ever gotten so far. So, can I get my soundbite for audience clapping, please? I know you can't control yourself any longer. For getting 20 points, you get to win a trip to Japan! I wish. We're gonna go to Japan and right we're now. and we're gonna override all the COVID-19 bullshit and do whatever the fuck we want because you got 20 points in our lovely bullshit quiz game, which nobody ever usually achieves. And no virus is gonna get in the way of that. Exactly. So 
Congratulations. We're going to get you your plane tickets after this podcast is ended. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Zibidi Boop Bop Dap Dibi Dee Da. My favorite pastime is playing jazz music on my saxophone, which usually sounds like women's moaning. Sometimes if I play the wrong notes, it sounds like men moaning. <laughs> Dear Lord, when that happens, I try my best to play everything on key. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now on to the next fun, fun thing of the Spoodcast. It's time for Situational Improv. Do or die. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This is the uh, part of the Spoodcast where we do improv to some situation that either someone in the comments has written or something I had to write because some people still don't give me any material to work with. For this episode, I had to write something, and uh, it was all for relevancy's sake. Originally, we were going to have the one Sean and I had, which was dismantling a bomb in a foreign language. But now, for Yosaki and I, we are going to be shopping for groceries during this vile outbreak against a mob. Yep. And, as per usual, I will bring out the D&D dice, which, of course, depending on how good our role is, will depend on how effective our actions are. Okay, great! So, let's just get the himmy-jimmies out of our system. <sighs> okay, alright, we're, we're in the store. Okay, you got the shopping cart. <laughs> that, that is my voice of just already having completely given up hope because I know exactly what kind of fucking bullshit we're about to deal with. It's all right. I brought my metal bat with me. Uh, Yay! I think. Yep. Oh, yeah. No, it's in prime condition. It's metal. It can bash anybody's head in if they try to pull any shit. Are you ready? Let's yeah. go. What do we need first? What do we need to get first? Uh, well, why don't we just fucking get toilet paper out of the way because that's where everyone's going. Okay. All right. Let's go to the toilet paper section. What do we got? <laughs> Motherfuckers, they already took all the toilet paper! Eh, fuck! Okay, alright, alright, plan B. Can we can we find someone who still has toilet paper? I'll use my metal bat. Oh, uh, I was just gonna say, like, why don't we just get some fucking paper towels and a knife and have that shit? Well, I tried to find someone who has the toilet paper and swing my metal bat, but apparently they they took the bat and they smacked my own face with it. Jesus! Uh. Ah! Fuck. Okay. Do you right. got a broken nose though? Let me see your face. Uh, let's see. Ah, my nose is in perfect condition. Slightly. I need. I need to uh, blow my nose a bit. Mmm, that's nice and red. Yep. Well, like it's it's seen worse days. Okay. <laughs> Paper towels, right? All right. Let's go. Paper towels. Vroom vroom. <laughs> And Skirt. what is the paper towel situation? Oh my god, there's at least, I don't know, what do you think? There are two rolls, and I see fucking people going through for them like angry vultures, so. Alright. Let's get a move on! And let me see if my bat can work. <laughs> Alright, so I managed to I can clear out some of these bitches out of the way. <laughs> Fuck off! Alright, so I got one, I got one of the paper towels. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it still works, so let's just get the fuck out of here. What do we need next? Uh, at this point, let's, we, alright, let's assume that we just got fucking, well, do we need any toiletries, actually? Other toiletries. <laughs> Other toiletries? Okay, let's go get some shampoo. Just, like, by, uh, showering stuff. Let's go get that shit. Alright. Skirt! Shorts! <laughs> pants! <laughs> Motherfuck, can we get anything in this fucking store? Apparently not. Is there anything else on Array? Is there at least, like, basic, cheap-ass shit that we don't want to use but have to? Absolutely nothing. Fuck. Okay. All right. Well... I guess I'll be using... I'll, I don't know. How the fuck am I going to clean myself? Yeah, freaking... I'll fucking just bubble bass with whatever I got left over in the house. There we go. We'll, we'll make some makeshift soap that... Uh, makeshift fucking body wash out of dish soap. There we go. At least we'll be like clean dishes. All right. Well, above all else, it's not really seeming like very many people are going for food, funnily enough. So let's see if we can make some headway in regards to that. I hope we do. I Here we so. go. Uh. All right. All right. So... No, no snack stuff, nothing like snack or can wise, but there's a surprising amount of like produce and like actually good shit that we can, you know, we can get. Is that something that sounds good to you? You want to 
try to just get some of this as much as we can? I guess. I hate eating healthy, but what else am I gonna fucking do? Go well, get it. Get it, girl. Get it. <laughs> yeah, good shit. All right, what's next on our grocery list? Uh, let's see. Okay, toilet paper, no. Uh, paper towels, no. Uh, body wash, showering stuff, fucking no. Uh, we got some food. Um, well, shit. Um. Shit? We, we can't go shopping for shit. Uh, unfortunately not. Uh, what about any pets we gotta think of? You know, what about your fucking dog? And my cat? Right. And your cat, yeah, we gotta go get some pet food. I don't think anyone's really made headway on that. Oh, that's what we thought last time, but then they took most of the good shit. Uh, All right, let's go. Vroom, vroom, skirt! Uh, Shorts! Skirt again! Uh, I'm skirt! Uh. Okay, look, at least I can take care of my pets. There's a there's a decent amount of stuff. Let's okay, go. Okay, fantastic. They must have just fucking restocked this. Thank God. All right, let's get that good qual that that affordable but quality stuff that I know of. At least the shit that I know my dog will eat. All right. All right, I can rest easy knowing that our pets can at least be fine. I'm right. fine with that. You know, we're we can still eat if we gotta be, you know, not as cleanly as we'd like to be. You know, shit. Shit. That sucks. Hey, we're 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 fucking stuck inside. Maybe we should have invested in getting a bidet instead. Yeah, I've been seeing people actually do that. You know, no jokes aside. Well, what can you say? What are you gonna do? Ah! Ah! All right. So, is that all of our shopping? Did we did we do everything? Shit, I guess for you know what we thought we were gonna get. This is much as much as we're gonna get. So. I guess so. All right. I guess it's time to go to the checkout. Everyone is in the goddamn way. Okay. Alrighty. I don't have patience for this shit, okay? I've been trying to get every fucking thing in this fucking store, but these fucking people took every fucking thing that mattered to me. Minus the pet stuff. But I'm not gonna sit here and take this like a bitch. Here we go! <laughs> So oh people, god, alright. Uh, my bat's pretty bloody. I think our cart got a little uh some, ransacked. A little ransacked, but I'd say we're at the front of the line. Let me pay for my shit and get the fuck out of here. Oh, uh, what the shit dick is this? There's some fucking people standing in the way from getting to my car! Are you are you for fucking reels? Okay. What well, now? I uh it's time I pulled out my trump card. Uh, the water gun. That's that's not gonna do. Do I have another weapon? Well, I have a wooden plank. You wanna you wanna go hit people with planks? Does does, does the wooden plank have nails in it? No. Fuck. Well, it's hard and it sucks to get hit in the head with. So, but I guess is what I got. You just keep using your metal bat. I know. guess I gotta go slugging on these fools. All right. <laughs> Okay. We 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 got we got some of them down. I'm really in pain, but we got this. I'm gonna get in my car, we're gonna go drive off into the sunset. At least the car works. Alright, peace out bitches! I hope you enjoy your stupid stack of toilet paper! And I'm just sitting there, you know, I probably have a bit of a messed up nose at this point myself. Maybe a black eye, probably busted lip. But we, ma we fucking made it. Maybe without toilet paper, but we fucking made it. Yup. This comes to show that when push comes to shove, I, I got a metal bat. <laughs> And I got a fucking wooden plank. And scene. Yay! That's probably what's gonna actually happen to either of us in these next coming few days when we actually have to go shopping. But I don't have a metal bat. And I don't have a metal plank. I don't- not a metal plank. I don't have a wooden plank. A wooden plank. <laughs> a metal plank. A that'd, metal plank. That'd be scary. That'd be dangerous as the bat. Yeah, I'm like, dude. Would the would the metal plank be as thick as like a generic like wooden plank like that, or would it be like thin like a sheet of metal? Uh -uh. I want to assume just a sheet of metal because I would love to just 
any of y'all ever watch Higurashi, you know that yep. yep, you know that one part where Rena fucking uh slices Satoko's uncle's head in half with her hatchet? I want to be able to do something like that. <laughs> <sighs> so that was our situational improv. Now we are on the finale of the Spootcast. Yay! We it, made it! It's time to talk about some updates. Do you have anything? Um, well, unlike Dante and his usual posse here, I myself am a very low-key person. I haven't any media following or anything of that sort. No projects, nothing like that. I'm just another everyday internet person that keeps to themselves but happily opens the company happily opens myself to the company of others there's the word i wanted having said that if you somehow enjoyed my crackheadedness and my teeming with just being a wild card i am in dante's discord server which i will hopefully be presenting myself in you know more often in, you know, this coming soon time, so if you ever find yourself in there, and you're remembering my name... It takes one dollar in the Patreon to get on the Discord. It's never been cheaper just to get to put in one dollar for your boy and go join the community. That's all it'll take for you to get in the Discord. Is if it, Oh, sorry. If everyone donated one dollar, I would not be having a job, and I would be working on YouTube full-time. Minus the school struggle, but you get the idea. Yeah, and it's quite a fun Discord as well. Whenever I do pop up, it is always very consistently active, with many of the people that pop in and out of Dante's projects, and people that you may have known just from his, you know, what he has said verbally in passing. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in there, and I think it's really worth giving that one dollar to check out. Because it's only a dollar. It's only a dollar. <laughs> um, so yeah, she also does role playing. That is, oh yeah, that is actually true. I am pretty active in Tumblr's role playing community. I do a lot of writing over there as well. Currently on a bit of a hiatus, all things considered with life on my end. But I do hope to be funding myself moseying back over there at any points in the future. When that does happen. Maybe there will be an update with links that you can find me at those blogs. You can see what I do, just what I like to do in my free time, where my creative outlet is. Uh, yeah. And also, she, uh, when she also gets back into life, she'll probably also get back into her cosplaying, which she used to do a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did used to be pretty... I know, know more about what she does than she does herself. Yeah, it's just been some time since I've delved into these hobbies. But yes, I now that he m refreshes my memory, I am a writer and I am a cosplayer. Both are just on hold while I figure my life and everything else about my life out. That said, though, when those things are back on my radar, applicable, applicable links will be applied. You can check out what I do and, you know, what I'm up to in that case when that time finally comes. Ta-da! So as I was, uh, was saying earlier during the life thing, um, hi guys, I usually don't do these post recordings after the Spoodcast, but as you could tell, a lot has changed since March 15th. I'm recording this on March 24th. Since then, um, my job got put under lockdown, so I don't have a job. Basically, the two days that I was going to be working the week is now nothing. And I ended up dropping the English class because the workload was really just starting to overwhelm me, plus with all like the emotional effect this lockdown is having on me and all that shit. It, it was just much. So all, all I have now is my Asian history class, and that's easy peasy. Otherwise, I'm making a lot of time to make sure I can get some Dark Abridgery X stuff done. As you can already see, I did end up uploading the My Restless Nightmares Q&A, which was what I wanted to do before the Spoodcast as it was. So now it's there. There's a short Spoots kit I'm trying to work on right now. If you have went to my recent stream last week, then you already know what I probably have in mind. Otherwise, your boy's just working on his easy Asian history class, working out every other day, getting fucking strong, and uh, trying to get Dark Bridge X stuff going. So hopefully we'll see a lot of, at least I will see a lot of progress. You guys won't really see anything since now all my Spoots are like, a big thing instead of like bits and pieces of episodes now these days but uh there's something like that going on and then i have a uh, another spoo that i done already but i'm having i have a cast come in like a full cast and actually having good voice acting come in 
for that one. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. If you know what I'm talking about, then get hype. Other than that, I'm alright, I'm safe, and I'm gonna be working hard to make sure that I can get as much content as I can out there while I don't have a job and don't have to go in a building for school. And, uh, yeah. Alright, we now return you to the March 15th recording. This has been... I don't remember which episode this is. This is... That's the end of our, uh, Spoodcast. Thank you guys for listening in to our ramblings and yellings and shenanigans. Like I said, it's always optional if you want to leave a like or a comment. Leaving a like does get me through YouTube's fucking bullshit uh, finding system or whatever the fuck algorithm. Uh, but comments are always appreciated if you want to express your thoughts for this episode. And uh, if you want to support your boy on Patreon, it is X on Patreon. Slash patreon.com slash darkbridgerx, all that jazz. And for a dollar, you can get yourself on the server, and five dollars can get you some of the bloopers that I worked on and on the uh, Restless Nightmares and more to come. All optional, but I would really love it. And uh, yeah, you guys have yourself a good night, day, whatever the fuck time it is. And remember, if you don't bring a metal bat, you're not gonna get towels. And if you're, if you say, sir, you're 19. Okay. All right. Johnny. Johnny.